You are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Oh, glory to God. I've been so impacted, I've been so loaded in this program. So far, I think I'm the most pregnant person now. A lot of ideas, a lot of wisdom, a lot of insights, mind-boggling secrets, things that can change a man's destiny. That's what I've been enjoying in this meeting. And Wow. I don't know about you, but I think I'm completely changed. Completely changed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, this morning we'll be looking at something that relates to business. And, um, you know, this is a summit. It's titled Africa CEO Summit. And the essence of this summit is to help us become um, people who would impact their generation economically. Economically. The Bible says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. So there's um, prosperity in the kingdom. God's plan is for his children to prosper. Anybody who preaches to you and tells you that prosperity is not Christianity, tell the person that Lack of prosperity is not Christianity. Because that is what Jesus died for. He was made poor, so by his poverty you can become rich. That's what he died for, nothing else. The essence of Christianity. Can't you see that the first thing Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 4? said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach what? The good news. To who? The poor. The first people the good news is preached to. The poor. The poor. He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. To the poor. Let me shock you. After salvation, the next place the gospel affects you is in your pocket. Follow me. Oh. After salvation, the next place the gospel shall affect you is where? Your pocket. I like the Bible when it says that you cannot serve God and mammon. I found out that the Bible didn't say you cannot serve God with mammon. So, to serve God effectively, you need mammon. Mammon is money. To serve God effectively, you need mammon. Do you know close to 80% of the problems we have in the body of Christ. Money problems. People don't come to church. Money problem. The love of money is the root of all evil. It is also the lack of money that is the root of evil. It's not just the love of money. There are people going to hell because they don't have money. Backsliding problem. Check. Lack of money. That's why as a ministry, we are keen about this thing. We want to balance life. We want to balance life. We want to raise a church where everybody is successful. Church where when people see you, when people look at you, when people come close to you, Something about them observe. Something when they observe you, something about them is transformed. They, something about them is inspired. Something about them is wowed. Wow. 
So go and write it at maybe your doorpost in your house. So every morning you wake up, you, you see, that's the first thing you see. Christianity without prosperity equals stupidity. Christianity without prosperity equals mediocrity. The message you preach, do you know there are places you can't go to and preach this gospel effectively until you have the means, the means. Money is not an end. Money is a means to an end. There are people who won't even listen to you until they see the means, they see money. It is religion that tells you money is evil. The true gospel enriches you. The true gospel it salvages you. It, 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 it works on your finances. That's why this summit is good. And for those of you who have been following the summit, you just be following closely, carefully. I'm sure there are a lot of skills falling off from your eyes. There are a lot of limitations falling off your mind. You're beginning to see things the way they can be. Beginning to see yourself the way you can be. That's the importance of this meeting. The whole idea is so that when you leave this place, you don't leave thinking the same way you've been thinking. You don't live here acting the same way you've been acting. You don't live here talking the same way you've been talking. You live here with a different mindset, a different way of thinking. You don't see things the way they are again. You start seeing things the way you are. Because nothing changes without until things have changed within. Not prove on the outer world until it has first changed within. Your outer world is simply a reflection of your inner world. QED. All these prayers, fasting, binding of devils and all that we are doing is because we have not changed from within. Once we have changed from within, everything around the environment starts aligning to suit your condition. It starts aligning to suit your internal condition. That's what I'm talking about. So this morning, I'll show you a very simple secret. I titled it the 10 over 10 rules of business. What is business? A lot of people think business is buying and selling. It's not. Business is simply meeting needs. Business is simply solving problems. Business is simply solving problems. Meeting the needs of people. Maybe through the rendering of setting goods or services. The essence of business is to close a vacuum of a particular need in society. Of course, you know, business has been business as old as man itself. Do you know when God created the heavens and the earth, when he created man, the first thing God gave man was work. Follow me. The first thing God gave man was not a wife. The first thing God gave man was a life. So when he created man, see what he told man. He said, tend and keep the garden. Tend and keep. He also gave him another instruction. After he made man and named man, the next thing he told man was, name all the animals in this field in this garden. So a man will look at an animal and call it lion. He looks at the other animal and call it antelope. He looks at the other one and call it gorilla. What was man or what was God doing with man? God was teaching man how to be productive. Business is simply living a productive life. He was teaching man how to be busy. That's business. Busy and productive. He was teaching man how to be useful to society. So you see, man was tending the garden. He was working. The two kinds of things man was doing. 
two kinds of work. He was tending to the garden. At another, at another side, you see, he was naming the animals. So, man was tending to the garden. Possibly he was weeding grasses. He was beautifying the plants. What do you call that? Physical assertion. Physical assertion. He was maybe, you know, spraying chemicals on the water to ensure that the fishes, you know, breed well. Physical assertion. Then he was naming the animals. Mental assertion. Because for man to have sat down and observed, can you see all the, all the animals, all the names man gave them, they fit into them. You see, lion. You see, it, it fits into it. Creativity was embedded in him. Then you see goats. How was man able to sit down and coordinate? He looked at the behavior of the goat. He looked at the characteristics of the lion. Okay, can't you see chicken? Their names fit in chicken. They see eagle. Why did he call the eagle chicken? It wouldn't have entered. It wouldn't have fit. So God gave man puzzle. He gave him an equation to solve. So the man God created could physically assert and mentally assert. So that means man could sit down and drop a business plan. Mental assertion. He could sit down and think out ideas that can improve his life. Mental assertion. What idea can I put on ground to become ideal in life? He could think could drop a business proposal. Mental assertion. He could think new ways of improving his life and improving society, improving his environment. Mental assertion. If you follow my teachings very carefully, you see the kind of thing I teach you in church. Are things that if you incline your mind to, you would move your life to the next altitude, the next level. If you incline your ears to my saying you will move your life to the next level. If there's one thing we do in this church, if there's one thing I teach you to do in this church, is to marry physical assertion with mental assertion. Usually I tell you, if your body is faster than your mind, your progress will be slow. If you're always mm, so fast, hard working, there's a different, successful people don't only work hard. There's a difference between working hard and working smart. Hard work, labor, physical assertion, smart work, mental assertion, ability to think. Thinking is not worrying. Hey, you think too much. I like thinking too much. Pastor, you're always thinking. Yes, not worrying. It's a difference. Two different things. I'm always thinking. Right? Because if you don't think, you will stink. And if you stink, you will sink. That's a problem we have. People don't think. You just go through life wishing. There's a difference between wishing and thinking. Wishing. Thinking is the use of the mind in a constructive way to produce desirable results in life. That's what thinking is. The constructive use of the mind. In order to produce desirable results in life. That's thinking. We call it creative thinking. Creative thinking. Ability to sit down and come up with ideas that can turn the landscape of ability to, you know. Ability to look within and extract innate potentialities in you. to bring those potentialities to light. That's thinking. The question is this. Every morning I wake up, people ask me very funny questions. 
people ask you very funny questions. Questions like, how are you? Have you had your bath? Have you eaten? How was your night? Regular questions people ask every day. How was your... Did you eat? You know, ask very funny questions. Well, I've hardly heard a person ask him, did you think? I've not heard someone ask him, have you thought today? A whole day passes. People don't think of how to improve their life. A whole day. They are not thinking. Not thinking of how to add to the economic index of their nation. Not thinking of how to extract the, you know, opportunities that align dormant in their society. They don't think. They don't think. And that's why we have a lot of distracted fools everywhere. They don't think. They only wish. And if wishes were horses, beggars were right. They don't think. And because they don't think, they don't even know when an opportunity is around them. They can't seize it. There's power in thinking, you know. Thinking. See Bill Gates at the age of 12 thinking. His mother was looking for him. The guy screamed and said, Mom, why are you disturbing me? I'm thinking. Don't you think? Don't you think? What are you doing? Since morning, thinking on how to become a big gate that will assess the bills of nations. That's the meaning of bill gate. I was thinking, how can I become a bill, a big gate that will assess the bills of people? You don't think. If I stay around the man who thinks, I know. There's a coordination you have around that man. You had, if I stay around the man who think, one of the things you see is organizational skills. He's so organized. Do you know even before I come into an environment, I've already organized the environment with my mind. Thinking. God gave you a mind so you can give Christ. God gave you a mind so you can give him peace of mind. So you can give him rest. Because all the prayers we are praying are actually disturbances to him. God give me this. God give me that. God give me this. God give me that. God give me this. And God is saying, but I've given you a mind. And when God gave us a mind, he gave us everything we would ever need. Look at all the things you are enjoying in life. You think they all came from heaven. Entered the aircraft one time. I said, this aircraft I'm flying now, did it fall from heaven? Did God create it? Somebody who was thinking created it. So, you are busy crying, God give me. Somebody is using his mind and he's not even praying. Most of these guys don't even pray. They are not even Christians. Some of them, pure atheists. But the results they are making, the cameras you are using, Somebody thought it out. Clothes you wear. Somebody thought it out. There's nothing people have done that was not born out of thoughts. That was not born out of a thought to solve a problem, to meet a need. Look around you. Everything was thought out. Do you know as powerful as God was, he, as powerful as God is, he also thinks. He also you know that you were even a thought in God's mind first. Before God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. You think it just happened. God first thought it. God first thought of making you before he made you. God, it together. You think it was just magical. They just built man. Just did one magic. Boom. Appear. A man just appeared. Mm. They mold the head. When they finish molding the head, God will sit and look at it. He will call um, Jesus and say, Jay, look at this head very well. What do you think about it? 
That is the question. What do you think about it? And Jesus will say, Ah, the only challenge I have with the head is that it looks like that one, that chimpanzee we created. It's no difference. It looks like that gorilla. Say, hey, but we're supposed to make it in our image and likeness. He said, Holy Spirit, come. What do you think about this stuff? Say, God, I have an idea. Let's take the eyes away from this place we put it. Can we adjust it? So, okay, bring the measuring tape. We measure Jesus' eyes. Okay, it's 2.5 meters. Okay. Holy Ghost, I put it. Put the tape. Yeah, we made a mistake somewhere there. Just bring the eyes down. Then bring it down. Yeah, he's looking like a man now. I think it was one day he did that job. It took him time oh, to build you. How God constructively. Okay, look at your body system. Sometimes I look at myself and I am amazed. I'm trying to show you how to, how to reason in life. Because some people are just walking around serving a living God. I am serving a living God. You don't know the living God you are serving is also a professional. I would rather sing serving a professional. I am serving an expertise. Amen. Who's singing living God? You don't know how that living God he's a professional. He's the most successful man in the universe. If I look at what Bill Gates has done, it's not one hundredth of what God has done, of how God thinks. That's the God you're serving. You are doing religion, church. Sit down, they pollute your mind with demons and witchcraft. You go out and hey. Sometimes I look at my human body. I look at my system. I say, my God, check it. Your eyes has never done the function of a nose. Everything is well coordinated and well interlinked. You eat. After a while, digestion takes place. I've not seen people going to poo poo through their mouths or through their nose or through their ears. Imagine go to the toilet, open the system. Put your ears in our poo poo. The way God connected the whole part of the body. Do, do you sit down to wonder how did this man think this thing? And there's no mistake somewhere. So sometimes, like yesterday, when they were setting seats, they were setting, I was looking at them. I said, Come. It tells me you're not thinking. I said, Come and look at what you did. Come and look. I said, Do you know when God finished creating a particular thing? The Bible said, And God saw that it was good. So perhaps if it was he would do another thing. He finished. After he created the sun and the moon and all that, he saw and it was good. So there was appraisal. There was examination. But some of us live our lives without appraisals, without examination. We just walk around, no thinking. We don't look. Why are we not making progress in this, in this dimension? What is lacking here? What can I put in this area of my life? To get desired results. Why is Mr. A getting more results than me? What does he know? What is he doing? That's thinking. When you start asking such questions in your life, then you are ready for this thing. That's when you are ready. This thing I'm talking about. Why is it? That's why I think. Why is that ministry successful? What are they doing? What did they do to raise leaders? I find that secret. I start employing it. Okay, maybe we should employ things like this. Put things. That's why you see I'm always shouting. Why? I have seen something. And the day I will stop shouting is the day you start seeing what I've seen. There's a way I've seen you can become. So that thing gives me restlessness. I'm so curious. I'm so passionate. I'm so, I, can I get this people to stop behaving like animals and start behaving like human beings? Because there are people who behave below the standard of humans. Opportunities everywhere. Yeah, people can't assess it. Why? They don't think. I'm not here to talk to you about the power of thinking this morning. I want to show you one or two things. Ten over ten rules of business. I told you business is not necessarily buying and selling like some of you think. 
How many of you are aware I'm involved in business? Hey. I'm involved in big time business. Most of you don't know. <laughs> big time business. Do you, do you see the way I'm talking to you now? It's business. In your mind, pastor is preaching. I'm not preaching, I'm doing business. What is business? Solving problems. You can't solve a problem and be poor. It's business. When I'm invited to go and preach somewhere or speak somewhere, I don't finish speaking and come back empty-handed. Things follow me. It's business. I'm here to see what man does in life that is not a business what a man is doing to solve a problem and make profit. I'm yet to see what is... Do you know even banking, we call it career, is still business. Glow, we call it career. Well, you who is working in Glow may say, I'm a career person. But Mike Adenuga doesn't call himself a career person. He calls himself a businessman. He's a chief executive officer. Who is a CEO? He's a businessman. So you who is working for him, you are there doing suit and tie. I'm a career person. The guy is a CEO. He doesn't call himself a career person. He's a businessman. Who is Mark Zuckerberg? Businessman. Who is Bill Gates? He's a businessman. So whenever you hear that word business, don't let your mind not run to a batch of market. Let it not run to a batch of market. Do you know the guys who got the contract to fix all the street lights in this city? Businessman, it's a company. The government wants to do something. They, they are looking for businessmen, contractors. Who is a contractor? A businessman. Somebody you contract to do a business, to do a job. That's a businessman. It's because they call it contractor, and it looks like tractor. So it looks big, sounds big. It's a businessman. But you see, that man is solving a problem. Look at the way the whole lights, the whole streets of, the whole major roads in town is lighting up. If there was nobody to supply that need, we would not enjoy what we're enjoying here now. Okay, see the roads, they are tiring everywhere. Siemens are needed to do those jobs, are you aware? So if there was nobody to supply the Siemens, Ibeto is a businessman. Okay, let's not even go too far to Ibeto. Let's say the guys who are even buying wholesale from Ibeto and retailing. They are businessmen. And there's no way you are solving a problem you will not be making money. Well, of course, the first purpose of business is not to make money. The first purpose of business is to solve a problem. The first purpose of business is not to make money. The first purpose is to meet a need. It is in solving that problem that you make money. If you start business with the idea of making money, you lose money. But start the business with the idea of the problem, you make money. Because money is just a certificate of appreciation for a job well done. You didn't hear that? Money is just a certificate of appreciation for a job well done. You can also put it this way. Money is the reward you get for solving a problem. So when you give somebody a particular commodity or a particular service and the person tells you, the person gives you money, even if he didn't tell you thank you, that money is just a way of saying thank you. I go to bab my hair. After babbing, like I have a new babbing saloon now in Enugu. I took an oath not to bab in the back lake again. Discover my hair grew to a level. I needed to do my carvings and all that and look more cute. But I couldn't enter. I went to a barber shop. I said, just shave my beard. Don't touch my head. If you touch, I'll kill you. You guys don't know how to bab here. Don't know how to render. Well, a lot of things that I should have been saying here on excellence and all that, I wouldn't be able to say. Quality values of business. You get them in my book, The Winning Business. You see how to serve people better. The indicators of business opportunities. When there is a vacuum in a particular service or product 
is an opportunity to render that service or product. The another indicator of business opportunity is when there is poor rendering of that service or product. And somebody can like, for instance, personally now, I'm thinking along that line. I want to start an ultra modern barbing salon in town. Not because I know how to barb. Ultra modern one. We don't have anyone here. Place where you enter, you don't tell the guy who is barbing, bab me like this. You sit down and be sleeping, and the guy babs. When you wake up, you're like, Come, you are God. You can make man. That's where Baba is. They don't know it. I speak with Baba. Like, do you know you are God? You beautify people. That's God's job. God finished making man in his own. Okay, one time God said, You are fearfully and wonderfully made. The only thing most Babas know how to do is to make people fearful. They don't make the wonderful. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Just make people look fearful. I entered the salon in Enugu. I sat down there. In fact, the fact when I walked in alone, I know these people are people of values. The people you even see there, baby, you know. Hmm. People of value, their uniform, their appearance, their clip herself. So this is why you enter saloon to bab and they carry matches. Put on the clip up. The team, they just they do it to have bracadabra. And before the clinic, carry spirit. Clean, clean. Like God, when with this name. Can people buy sterilizers? This one you enter, you see my sin sterilizing. Hey, the guy who is even babbing you, clean. If you see his own haircut, you, you will be encouraged. You know this guy knows his work. And I sit down. Their tears alone, it's like this one I sit on in church. Fine, you enter, your two legs will rest on something. You adjust it, you sit down. Hey! If not that I'm a civilized man, if I'm a local man from one is young, bro, I would have fallen the nation that day. Falling the hands of the nation. I sat down. One fine music was playing on everything well ordered. They finished wiping my hair. The guy brought hot water dipped in towel. Sanitized my hair. Sanit- okay, he raw powder. He got one. I don't know what happened. But my hair was sent in way I wish about that night. Because of the scent that was oozing. I was feeling good. My self-esteem busted. It boosted. They just finished but was the store dry after i finish he hung got another one he did did so shh, put comb the thing was just moving moving at the time i turned i looked at the guy i said i love you sir i love you he said thank you sir thank you. the way david talked to you thank you sir I, was, I said oh i'm in love with this place i wish the baby never ended i was already sleeping the music was playing. It's not this one you enter. Bogum, 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 bogum. It's not this one, the, those noise. It's not Timaya, plantain seller. It's not Poda Court Boy. It's not Donga Mighty. I mean, oh my God. You know this kind of song when you're hearing it, you feel like you're already in Yankee. Oh, so crisp, rock, fine rock. The guitars, you're here. And oh my God. I saw Babin Saloon. I said, This is powerful. I wish we had, when we built Priestley Hill Center, when we built our, our church, our, our campground, we will have those kind of Babin Saloons there. We have banks, have Babin Saloon. We have eateries, we have shop right inside. That's how church should look. And that's because somebody's thinking. That's why anytime I walk into ShopRite, I don't just see ShopRite. Some people walk in there, they just see, I walk in there and I see mega church. Keep saying it would. You come into church, they we, oh my God. That's what I see. Because somebody's thinking. And you know, when I think that way, certain things people do around me, if it doesn't meet that level of thinking, it's below standard for me. Because I already have a benchmark. When I saw that salon, I knew this guy is a businessman. There's no way that guy is not making more than 50000 every day. One hair, 50000 I, I was willing to pay more. Not because he cut all my hair. 
But because the quality of service was awesome. The environment was awesome. Just ACs, he put there alone. That can, can not awesome. I said, this guy is a businessman. Oh, all that is to business cannot be taught today. That's why you need to pick that book. Everybody is, is one of the best things you can get for yourself today. Pick a copy of it and go and sit down on it. Devote it page. I was in that saloon, and do you know, just because of what I saw there, an idea for a new book came. Environment conditioned my mind. There's a place I enter, I can think. The first time I enter shop right idea for church how church should look it ran into me the places i travel to when i enter there i look 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 my ideas starts running wild i enter that saloon hey ideas running business is running into my head a new book entered my head it's okay i've done a book on business winning business okay i'm going to do another one now titled business values in that place, I was able to pick more than 10 values. More than 10 values that guy practices in his business that makes his business more successful than another guy who is also babbing close to him, who is not making... I, was, I found that the bedrock for business success is values. You see things like service is a value in business. Quality of service. You see things like humility is a value. You see things like integrity. You see things like excellence. Love is a value in business. If you don't love your customers, they won't stay. It's a value. You see things like commitment. Time is a value. Here you wake up in the morning. Eight o'clock, shops are not yet open. Go to that guy's shop. Seven o'clock is open. The guy has value for time. He knows that somebody may be leaving his house by 6 a.m. to be in the office and he needs to shave. Yesterday, when I went to drop some of my suits for, we got to, he was suggesting, let's go to that guy. I said, which guy? He said, the one that we were. I said, I'm not going there. I said, I know him. He has ironed my suit before. He said, sir, why? He's good at what he, I said, he's being good at what he does. His values are bad. I don't like his values. One, he doesn't stay in his shop. Two, he doesn't have lights. Doesn't value lights. He doesn't, so you go there. Iron. So no one likes you carry your suit and go back. He has chased the customer. He doesn't have business values. Imagine you go to crunches in the morning. Eat. Can't you see all these business that are succeeding? Go and check his values. You go to bank in the morning and they tell you no. We are starting 10 o'clock today. Six o'clock, five o'clock, they're already in the bank preparing for you. Once you arrive there, eight, all of them are seated down waiting for you to collect money or to drop money. Go to crunches. Once it's eight, it's open. Can't you see they're still in business? You think it's because they know how to cook? No. Values. The guy who is leaving his house seven and knows once he gets there eight o'clock, he will find food to eat. So they are consistent. The law of consistency is a value. They are consistent. They are consistent. You can predict them. Not this one you're doing business. You can't predict what he's going to do next. You give somebody your suit to iron. He tells you tomorrow, come and collect it. You come tomorrow, sir, no light. You'll pick it next tomorrow. And they are saying, can't you see there's no light in town? That person does everything possible to read all the excuses of his business so he can satisfy his customers. That is value. I since in a place somebody because i was thinking i picked it up and a new book downloaded in my spirit business values and i'm working on it already just for going into a place i'm paying one thousand to cut my hair i cut a book that can make me millionaire because i'm thinking i'm thinking you see the right brothers just in church pastor was preaching so you must ask god for that software to to be able to convert data convert some of these things i'm saying here into beneficial you know information you you need to ask god for that thing because sometimes information is coming you're just hearing things you're not able to translate those things to benefit your life is a big problem the right brothers were in church their father was preaching about beds preaching about beds why he was preaching about flying beds he was they were seeing a plane the same metal beds, beds that could fly, carry human beings. 
So when I enter into an environment, enter into a place, I don't see things the way they are. I see them the way. It's a product of intense thinking, intense study, intense observation. That is what has made me go into a place. Inspirations. Inspiration. The only way to escape expiration in life is to have inspiration. If you don't want to expire in life, be inspired though. I get inspired. 247. Look at how church looks today. You come to church. Can't you see? See. We have coffee. See. See the way it's arranged. Neat. Church service. Somebody is thinking, how can we improve church? How can we come to church and it looks like we are in um, we are United Nations Congress? That's what I'm thinking. So sometimes I look, I watch some of those clips. I watched one, Rush R, Rush R tree. And I saw a particular Congress, a particular, wow. I said, this is powerful, powerful, powerful. My God, this is so, this can be a church. See how this place looks. See this Congress, wow. Can we make church look like this? It's not this masquerade setting people do in church, oh digital i was driving somewhere and then go, i saw a particular sign post just a sign post something around you know i was was i the one driving yes i think i was the one or you i don't know i the thing entered brr, i said hey 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 i said behaving like a madman i said wait 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 can we do something like this on our stage can we can we can we can, can we do something something can we i said who where can we find these guys i'm driving i see can't you see fidelity signboard the kind of signboard Fidelity Bank has. I said, I said, hey, this is beautiful. Can we stop using banners and do light signboard? Hey, you see thoughts, creativity, things are entering my head. How to improve? That thing is called inspiration. I'm always inspired. Little place I go to, I see something. A movie I'm watching, I'm inspired. I watched one title exams. Exam. I saw just the way. <laughs> hey. I thought the setting of the exam hall alone it was enough. I said, if we build a school, when we finish building a school, this is what classroom should look like. I said, wow. I said, wow. This is exam hall. Though. The way the seats are positioned. The seats. I, want, I don't just watch films. I don't just look around. As I'm looking, as I'm watching, I'm seeing. I take everything in. That's how a man who will succeed behave if you're not able to draw millions out of things people you know little little things little little things that people overlooking i look at it i get can't you see solomon saying things like learn from the ants learn wisdom from the ants they are sitting ant life people are ignoring i sit down i learn from it and i get a volume of idea i can turn me into a millionaire I'm training you on how to use your eyes, how to use your mind. You need to know how to think differently. You need to know how to see things differently. That's why we have a lot of failure rates. Failure rate is high. Oh, I wish I had all the time. Inside and foresight is almost it's gone already. I have I just have limited minutes. Ten rules, ten rules, ten rules, ten over ten rules of business. Number one. Rule number one. Every business first begins with an idea. So prosperity begins with thinking. It begins with an idea. Every business first begins with an idea. Once idea has been translated, it becomes passion. Once passion has been pursued, cash flows. So in starting a business, don't go after money. Go after passion. So this is the equation. He starts, can you get me my board? It's a business summit. How many of you are enjoying this training where we've been doing since yesterday? Mind-blowing, right? At the end of this, we're going to do an appraisal. Everybody will have to go out. Between now and seven days, in seven days' time, you're going to be coming back. or putting up a committee after this meeting, after this service. A committee of people who will appraise what you are coming up with. And we'll look at it. Let me know if there was impact in this meeting. Or if it was another come and hear and go back kind of meeting. So business starts with an idea. See how money flows. Idea. Passion. Then cash. 
if you would make money in life this is the equation it starts with idea what idea do you have that idea must solve a problem that idea must meet a particular need that idea must improve on people that idea must improve on society so business starts with an idea prosperity starts with an idea wealth starts with an idea after you have caught an idea convert idea to passion let me tell you why over the years i have stood still stood firm without falling out falling out with all the storms i faced see the man you're seeing here i've faced things though i've seen things don't think whatever you look around me now that maybe it may be a little bit rosy was like that Mm -mm, i have the early days of my starting in life there were times when we were starting a school those days in cross river state do you know we were sleeping on the bare floor bare floor no carpets on the ground we didn't pay for the place we even book the guy we met was a campus student we met him and said please can we sleep in your house for a few days before we get our own the guy said no problem but i'm packing out soon i said no problem he packed out we met the landlady madam can we sleep in this house until you get a tenant she said no problem the guy cleared all the things mattress everything left the house there was no carpet on the ground there was nothing we didn't have any property it was on normal cement we were sleeping we just put one wrap sleep on normal c- for months with oh it was our suit we we're putting on the ground to sleep and we wake up in the morning dressing suits look to everybody in the town hey who are these guys at the time we are walking we, we convert the trek into strolling we, re- we re- baptize it in strolling we would trek a distance like from here to Ishiki. Trek a distance like from here to Ishiki just to get a particular thing done. We get to the school. Hey, no money. That was when we were building at the time. Hey, no money. We can't hire laborers to do a landscaping. We started doing the work ourselves. Look at me, proprietor. I'll carry shovel. We'll be, we're the ones planting. We're the ones landscaping. Sometimes at the time we even had to learn so many things we didn't know why we converted that idea to passion the reason most people are chronic failures in life they are not passionate i have never started anything with a capital the first capital i had was an idea capital when i caught an idea i transformed that idea to passion what has kept me going even in the midst of storms and tides and tempests was not because of the money in my pocket it was because of the passion the passion that was running in me i was passionate if you are not yet the man in that vision you cannot get that vision to speak even in ministry the same thing the same thing is it People have done all kinds of things to me. There's nothing you talk about that people have not done to me. Yet I stand stronger. There's nothing you can think about. Is it betrayals? I've seen it. Is it hurt? I've seen it. They do all kinds of things. And if you're not passionate about your calling, you're not passionate about your ministry, you're not passionate about that business, that idea, you will give up. I almost threw. You will get to a point where if you're not careful, you throw in the towel. Okay? But at the time, hmm, even if people okay, everybody leaves me and I'm the only one standing, I'll continue. I, I have been there severally. I will still continue. I'm telling you, that's been my life. I have never known how to give up. I why passion. Passion is what helps your vision not to pass on. You, you need to catch this thing as I'm talking to you now. Some of you should be getting pregnant with there are people who are not passionate, that's why they can't produce results. When God promises you Canaan land that flows with milk and honey, you need to also understand something that the road that leads to Canaan land doesn't flow with milk and honey. What will keep you on that road, what will keep you traveling that path is passion. So you see all the tons and tissues 
all the wahala, all the headache, everything that may happen to you. What is going to sustain you on that path? What is going to keep you on that journey? Passion. People disappoint you. They don't disappoint you. Somebody promised you money. He didn't give you the money. Uh, all of those things will not be a factor. People have thrown in their, their towels. People have killed. People have killed their Moses because Pharaoh said, kill all the first one. Imagine that guy, that lady who gave birth to Moses. Because Pharaoh said, kill all the firstborn child in, in Egypt. All the Hebrew firstborn child. Kill them all. Imagine that <laughs> Pharaoh's mom or the Moses' mom said, eh, eh, I don't want to die. He has already spoken. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine as she killed him. She took the baby and went and kept in the water. Not to drown him all. Because he knew that was where Pharaoh's daughter comes to bath. So she already had a projection that Pharaoh's daughter will have got the baby. She didn't even run away. She was there looking at the boy. Waiting for when the woman will come to take her bath. When the woman came and took the... She didn't even give up. She went and met the woman. He said, please, can I help you disciple your son? Can I help you do nanny for him? Can you see what a passionate woman did? Do you know it was passion? The mother of Idaosa had for Archbishop Benz in Idaosa that made that made her preserve that boy. Even when the father said, kill him, we have lost hope in him. It's an imbecile. It was passion. Instead of killing the boy, the woman took the boy to a distance. Eloped to the boy, ran away from the house. Imagine the woman killed that boy because the father said, let's kill him. He's an imbecile. We wouldn't have heard the voice of Archbishop Benz in the house. Okay, let's look at Jesus. Can't you see a Jesus Christ? King of kings, Lord of lords. Born into a world. To be the savior of humankind and mankind. Herod declared war after him. Herod declared fire after him. What finally happened? Can't you see what Mary and Joseph did with the boy? Where an angel appeared in the night and said, Hey, Herod is seeking to kill this boy. Take this guy yo, and run away. Take him, run out with this guy. Flee into Egypt. Imagine Joseph say, ah, God, I don't have that strength. Oh. Say you told us this son is a, is a son from heaven. Ah, if he's a son from heaven, let angels feel over this, all over this place now. What is this? Wahala. Just send legions of angels to fill all this place. They won't touch us. So that when Herod and his army men come, fire will just burn them. That was a God sent. Jesus was a promise sent from heaven down here. Imagine he concluded, eh, 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 no problem. Eh, we will stay. He's after he's a God. But there was need to take that guy and flee. Even if he was a promise. Even if he was a son of God. A lot of people have killed their Moses without knowing it. Because one Pharaoh said, hey, because government, they are not giving us jobs. Because they are not giving us jobs. Because they are not there. And they just joined a bad luck of unemployed graduates in Nigeria. Because they didn't give us jobs. They just go for, hey, my background. I was born in Izi. I was born in uh, Umbo. I come from the interior of Ivo. So nothing can happen. Can't you see a Gideon? Hello, that man of valor. And the guy says, hey, me? Valor what? I'm from the list of the clan of this whatever. That's why I check. Anytime God appears to a man and he wants to commission him, the first thing God does is to redefine that man's way of thinking. Because God can believe in you. The whole world can believe in you. You don't believe in yourself. You are a failure. You are going to fail big time. You're going to fail and have grandchildren. Your failure will have grandchildren. So, this is the cycle. I wish I had the marker, but you've written it, right? Business starts with an idea. 
when you have got that idea translate that idea into passion it's not just the idea that brings the money a lot of people with business ideas i have a business idea i have a business idea this is what i want to do i have and they will tell you so beautifully eh? good idea on paper so beautifully designed beautifully written beautifully ah, and you are impressed it is not going to come to pass that way the bridge between your idea and your money is your passion so passion is the bridge that's the best rule of business business starts with idea but idea must be converted to passion that is where the idea consumes you passion is simply idea that has consumed you passion is simply idea that has taken a hold on you what idea has consumed you? your idea is just good in the head you will never get it anywhere it has to consume you it has to eat you up you are sleeping in the night you are sleeping it you are dreaming you are dreaming it you are walking on the street you are walking it do you know what keeps me running this vision is the passion inside me that's that's just it i've seen something i've seen a day where we'll have camp meeting china will be coming france will be coming argentina i've seen it I, I, that's why sometimes i call some of you prophetic names sometimes i look at some of you i say hey you're my pastor mike look at some of you hey you are my revenue yeeks look at so I, I, when i look at some of these guys those big shots in dominion city i'm like don't worry we are the next in line and the thing starts consuming me hey how did pastor david get all these guys how did he raise this man okay how did he look at the whole world coming down from different parts of the world for camp meeting you see white people people from different nations and the churches are like hey is it just vision this man had is it just idea he had what did he do passion that thing that keeps him awake all night i want to know that thing he has seen and i saw that thing so sometimes i sit down and i'm listening to him he's telling us stories of how they started they started in the group there were just seven in the hall one family this one that one that i said is that how we started he started that small so if he started that small what made it this big is it just i have a vision that made it what made it that big so when i see those things mm, my passion that's how that's how i think that's why i can walk from morning till night and your pastor rest now eh, eh. i can't rest because there's something i'm seeing do you know anytime i feel even weak in my body i feel pains and i start thinking of the future I start thinking of the glory ahead of me. I start thinking of the life ahead of me. There's this energy that comes in. There's this exuberance that comes in. There's this excitement that comes in. There's this zeal that comes in. I can pursue it tirelessly. That's why I say without inspiration, expiration is inevitable. People expire because they're not inspired. Sometimes I, I come across pastors. I, I'm with them. And they don't know what is in my head. I'm like all of you don't worry give me time i see some of them their priorities just to pastor a good church drive a good car eat offering and tight i know a lot of them like that and they're okay marry give birth to children they just want to i said that's not my priority i've seen that's why you see all the men i follow after the bible say follow after this man who through faith and patience obtains the promise who through faith and patience so i have a benchmark of people i look after one of the ways to find a man who you will follow is to check his productivity because you can't fly further than the feathers of your father you want me to go and find one guy who is doing ministry somewhere in Abakaliki, or who is doing ministry somewhere in Enugu State, who is just recycling one church? I check the man's track record. Check what is his passion. What is it? What does he pursue after? If I check those things, I don't see it. You don't have anything to do around me. I forfeit that food I should have eaten, and I burn it by tapes. It's passion that will make you attend seminars. It's passion that will make you stay in a church like this. It's passion. You see a man who is not passionate, forget it. It's passion that will make you buy books. It's passion that will make you pay the price. All the price it takes to become successful in whatever venture you venture. Once that thing has happened, cash is inevitable. Idea, passion, cash. I want to round up this session in the next 10 minutes. Do I have a lot to talk about? Passion. 
A man's passion determines his focus. Pastor King said something yesterday. He said, if you have something in mind and you are in a batch of market and people are flaunting other things around you, you, you won't buy them because you know what you want. So passion defines your focus. Passion defines what you pursue after. No man who wore it entangled himself with the affairs of civilians. No, no. It is not possible. Have you seen those in boats running on the beach and he's wearing suits? Wearing Agbada 1,500. And he wants to draw your mind. Those things will hold him back. So passion determines your focus. It determines how you run. Passion determines your focus. Your focus determines your pursuit. What you are seeing determines what you are pursuing. If you're not seeing anything, you can't pursue anything. you just be like one guy beating around the bush, beating about the wind. There's nothing you will pursue. That's rule number one. Anything you are not... 3D ideas you should pursue after. 3D ideas you should pursue after. Number one, go for businesses that are dirty. That's the first D. Go for businesses that are dirty. Number two, go for businesses that are difficult. Then go for businesses that are dangerous. Go for ideas that are dirty. Go for ideas that are difficult. Go for ideas that are dangerous. You know why? Because these three categories of ideas are the places people are running from. And that's where the money is. The road to success is the road least traveled. That's where people run away from. Dirty businesses. You see that guy who packs shit in Lagos and is a billionaire? That's a dirty business. Hey, how many of you are aware back lake is okay let's know are you aware that the biggest problem one of the biggest problem presently in nigeria as a developing nation is a problem of debts it's a problem i i i've been privileged to travel the last time i traveled out the nation i traveled to is an error to chew gum sir and drop it on the on the street you can be sent back home for doing that it is an error an error to drink in fact i didn't see pure water in that nation no. they don't have water they don't have this sachet water no i didn't see leather water all their water can okay you've been to that nation i didn't see one leather water all their water can and they have disposables everywhere everything in order now if you look at nigeria you find out that we have not yet arrived that level of development people still eat bananas while traveling and they throw it away people still walk on the street they eat pure water drink pure water they throw the nylon on the floor and it's a big concern we don't even know how to dispose our refuses Go to what our works now. You can't pass that place except you have a car that has AC and the glasses are wine. If your glasses are not white, please cover your nose. Even EPSAPA don't know how to keep the state clean yet. They have not learned it. Do you know somebody who have sat down to study this issue of environmental cleanliness can build a, an environmental cleanliness consultancy firm. You can build a firm that renders consultancy in cleanliness, both for families, both for states, both for whatever. You can call it whatever. You can call it um, what's your name? Somewhere. You can call it some best cleaning enterprise. That's what somebody who is thinking. It's a dirty business where you can make it clean. I tell people the difference between let me not say that. You can make it clean. It's a dirty business. Okay, I think it's good I say this. The difference between the taxi man in Abakliki and the one in Dubai is packaging. 
If you enter a taxi man, a taxi man's car in Dubai, you know you enter taxi. There's a difference between taxi and taxi. Are you hear what I'm saying? There's a difference between taxi and taxi. Taxi driver is the one who doesn't care. The taxi driver is the one who has taken time to rebrand and refurbish his business. Make it look like he's a, he's a pilot of an aircraft. You enter their taxi. They, the one I entered, he has, his uniform is white. He has, like a pilot, he has a cap. The way they communicate, as though, and they are making mega money. It's packaging. The difference between plantain chips and bakery is how they call it packaging. The difference between peanut and granite is the P. Is a P. That thing they use and co- is the same granite. Packaging. So look at the environmental problem all around this place. All around. Do you know we hire women to cut grasses in this place? We pay them. The last time I hired women to cut the whole of these grasses, how much did we pay them? 15,000 plus. Just to cut the grasses, 15,000 plus, we paid them. And there are people coming to church and say, glory to God. Hallelujah. They are waiting for a white collar job. You don't know white collar job was a dirty collar job people washed. You don't know it. It was a dirty collar job. People took time to wash. Do you know there's no difference between bank and Adashe? Do you know what Adashe is? Have you had BAM? Weekly BAM. Weekly BAM. Check the bank of yesterday's and check the bank of. Do you know that the difference between paper money and trade by butter just rebrand is the same thing? Cowries were using it too. Stones were. It's just it's the same thing. Packaging. You can start something like a cleaning consultancy where you, clean, where you have to clean the debts in the state. For instance, we have that debt issue around town. And do you know government is interested in people who can come up with ideas? For instance, we have a governor in state who is excellent minded. Very excellent and detailed to the core. Detailed to the core. Can somebody package a proposal for cleaning a bakaliki? It will sell low. Can you package a company that advises EPSEPA, advises the Ministry of Environment on how to maintain cleanliness in the states? Can you write a proposal that can put up a lecture for the state where people, families, landlords, and all that can be sensitized? On how to keep their compounds. Because if families, for instance, all these landlords are taught how to put their houses in order, how to put their compounds, how they should dispose refuses. If they are taught it, you know, sometimes we try to solve a problem without getting to the root of the problem. It's just like diagnosing a sickness or administering treatment to a sickness you have not diagnosed. You just suspect this headache and you're taking an adult. It may be something else, but it's affecting you on the head. It may not be headache. You're treating malaria. You think it's malaria. You're taking whatever, chloroquine. It may not be it. First of all, you need to visit the lab and diagnose. Why do we clean our states? And after a week, the state looks dirty. If somebody who is thinking sits down and put up these things on paper. Okay, this is the reason. Our landlords are not clean. and not They don't have the culture of cleanliness. Okay, that is one. Number two. Okay, they don't um, observe sanitation exercise that's number two okay number three what else could be there? they don't have disposable cans in their house can we provide disposable cans in their house can we provide all of those stores and all? you know where you have come up with these things package that company just put some company structures and all of those stores have a board of management it doesn't take anything. Find two jobless people around you. Call them. Just like God called the Trinity. Called the Son and called the Holy Ghost. He said, let us make. He didn't have to tell them about salary fair. Look for people who don't have a direction in life. Look for people who are idling. 
All you need is to give them a vision that can benefit them in the long run. Just maybe two or three. That's the power. There's power in three. If three people unite, they can start anything. That's why you see God all the time. He's always talking about, okay, God appears. He says, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Three. Let us make man in our image and likeness. God the Father, God the, Son, God the Holy Ghost. There's this thing about the power of three. So you catch that business idea. Find a team. That's what it means. Call one or two persons together. Okay, we are now three. This is the business. Design the structure. Who is the head? What's the management board like? Who are the leaders? Who does what? Who does what? Job description. It can start from three and expand. They start taking steps. Action. Start taking steps. The direction of what you have seen. Don't wait until you go to the government house and they give you time to see. Mm -mm, start from somewhere. You can declare on my road a project. It's very simple. Walk into houses from one house to the other. Please, my name is so and so. You don't even need to address yourself as a corporate businessman. My name is engineer. Did you study engineering in school? No. But you know the environmental engineers. It's packaging. Don't go and call yourself. My name is Dirty Packer. My name is F engineer. Sammy, so so and so. Think of the complimentary card. How much does it take to take complimentary card? Just few. I am actually a sanitary engineer. Or I'm an environmental engineer. Our vision as a company. Okay, I'm the CEO of Sammy Environmental Technologies. Call it anything. Just make it look big. You say, mind that things. Make it sound good. We, our job is to clean the state. We, this is what we do. Our vision statement is, can't you see as a church, we have a vision statement, mission, we have core values. This is what companies look like. That's why we put it big there. So you know, Priestly Hills is not one other church. It's a church with a focus. So put it, just share in few minutes, in few lines, your vision. Our vision is to maximize, is to ensure cleanliness within the state and that, that. our mission statement is, just few, you know, and let them see this thing in you. You don't need so much. Just some little waterproof. Please, we, we want to ensure that your house is clean this month. We may not take anything from you. We, we are not charging. But we are going to give you two weeks of clearing your cabbages. Here are nylons. Anything you eat in this house and you want to dispose, dispose it in here. You can just print your name on it, your company name, big sack. Print it. If you can't afford cans, print it and put Just drop it there. So we'll come after three days to clear it up. Because we assume maybe after three days it should be full. We'll come and clear it free of charge. Do it for two weeks free. You'll be shocked. And as you're doing it, be smart enough to, to get data. Get data. Do you know you can, you, can, you can build a database? For every house you go and knock at, you, you give them a paper. They write their name. Call it a database or whatever. You write their name, write their number, their house address. Go and upload it on the computer. The world is now, you know, it's driven by technology. Upload it in the computer. And have somebody in the PR department, you can call him public relations officer, PRO, whose job is to send SMSs. I go some places now to shop. I see how people think, and I know that's a secret to their business. I just finished shopping. Before I leave, SMS entered my phone. Thank you. For allowing us serve you today we hope to do better next time please feel free to lodge in your complaint by calling this number if we didn't serve you well can't you see crunches is doing it now the last time i stepped into crunches i saw complaint slips on the table to rate them rate us find out where we are failing where we are you know and i was rating them people are doing it why to help them improve now you go there you see the renovation is going on now it may be from one of those suggestions somebody put down on paper that they are using that to improve and they are serving the public better and the more you serve your public better the more patronage index you build and the more customer base you build the more capital the more profitability you build for your company so build something like that send to them they feel it when you finish packing for three days send them hope you enjoyed our services we hope to serve you better next time after three give them a long come Two weeks, don't collect charges. After the second week, the next week, if you put 200 naira for one nylon, you pack. 500 naira a week, they will pay. Because people are too busy that sometimes they can't dispose. Children are waking up early in the morning to run to school. Have you noticed most children hate to pack debts? 
You send them. You can send them to do anything, but send them to go and throw debt. They are hungry. Can you pack it for them, sir? Some of them, it makes them run late to school. Parents have to drop them. Parents have to go to work. And these things are piling up. They are piling up. Can somebody on that take that task and make some money? Go for dirty jobs. I don't have the time. I don't have the time to dwell on these dirty jobs. Difficult jobs. Jobs that are hard to do. People are running away from it. Such jobs that are hard. I don't have time to explain. Dangerous jobs and all that. Okay, rule number two. When doing business, don't think seller. Think buyer. Think buyer. Don't think seller. Some people do business with a whole focus on themselves. How much they will make. How much they would earn. How much they would be able to. Mm -mm. Don't have yourself in mind when doing business. Have the guy you are serving in mind. Think the buyer. How best can I serve this person? Your focus should be building such a healthy customer service policy that treats your customers and serve them like kings. Create a policy in your business that makes every customer that walks into your business premises feel like a king, feel like a god. Do you know in church now we are building something like that? It's what we are building in church called Greater's Department. We put red carpet outside. So you're coming to church. The way they even hug you, shake you, receive you, make you feel like a king. We're even building a canteen now. We're thinking of building canteen in church. When church finishes now, people should be able to go out and place order for, you know, make them feel like, hi, this is home. This is family. Church is a family. People should feel loved. They should feel cared for. That's the same way your business should be. When you walk in, people should feel... When people walk in, they should feel a sense of wow. I like to come back here next time. Can't you see the way I I don't bab in a back lake again? I go to Enugu to bab my hair. Can you imagine that? I, I am willing to take the stress, wear my car, and I drive all the way to where? Enugu for one singular reason. Why? To bab my hair. Just to bab my hair. Can you imagine that? I refuse to burn my hair for this meeting. No? Because if I go to one confused Egyptian somewhere who is using clipper to bad people and make them look fearfully made, not wonderfully made, I, I don't know what I... So I, I prefer to comb it well and leave it until I enter Enugu. And you know, I don't bab score. If I bab score, it would have been a different thing. And I don't play with the carvings of my hair. I don't play with it. I don't play with it. So I found somewhere in 1,000 per court I'm willing to pay. I told the guy, if this is all it takes, in fact, after he bought me the last time, I told him, when coming next time, I'll come with a gift for you. And I told the person I went to, I said, do you know these guys don't only make money services right now, they also make money for values. They don't just make money for services, for the babbing they are doing. They're also making money for values. And so in that shop, after I finished babbing, I caught an idea for a book titled Business Values. I found out the bedrock for business success, values. What kind of value? Go to banks, you find out. They may not put any other big thing, they put their values. Go to Fidelity, go to GTB, go to Access, you see values. Honesty, to serve you. Check all their motto. Everything deals with service. It deals with serving you better. Why do they put those things? Businesses are founded on the bedrock of values. You don't have values that runs your business. Mm, you'll be run out of business soon. You'll be outcompeted in business. Just because the setting of a barbing saloon in Enugu. Hey! Inspiration. I sat there. The guy was barbing. I was praying my spirit. Let this barbing not finish today. The AC was cruising. The, the music I was hearing. Even if I wasn't understanding what they were saying. But my God. Who cares? The, the kind of clothes they even used to cover me. The guy put tissue around my... There's this tissue that gums. They, they finished babbing. I didn't see one hair on my... You can go to bed without taking your bath. This is one hair on my skin. The way he wrapped the tissue, then put the cloth. Hey! And the way they talk to you. Please, sir, are you okay? Are you comfortable? Are you sure? Do I adjust the seat backward? No, I'm okay this way. Just adjust it forward a little. Oh, why not, sir? Shh, 
You know, in that Barbados, they serve you wine. For waiting, you are taking wine and taking some granules. And you say, if I come back to that Barbados alone, for the way I'm treated, I shouldn't pay more. Even when you don't ask me, I'll pay more. I'll pay more. So don't think seller. Don't think about you. Put the guy who you are serving in mind. How best to serve him. Put him in mind. So don't think buyer. Don't think seller. Think buyer. Have a genuine interest for your buyers. Show them love. Love them. Love them. Let it not be come and buy and go. Let relationship should be your focus. The poorest man in life is not the one without money in his pocket. He's the one without quality relationship. Have a relationship with your customers. If possible, know them by their names. At the end of the month, send them good text messages just to say thank you to them for patronizing you. That's business. Have a genuine interest in them. When they come to their shop, some of them, maybe family members, when they come, put sweets on your counter for their children. Put small, small biscuits. What does it cost? Just little, little biscuits. Hey, junior, for you. And the woman feels, wow, this business. Anytime we come here, they treat us like. But if you're always thinking along the path of what you would get, you switch the business. I don't have time. I wish I was dwelling on this so, so much. Okay. Now, in spotting out your ideas, in spotting out ideas you are easy to flow with, rule number three, think top ten questions. There are top ten questions I want to show you now that can agitate your mind on discovering what you can easily do, what you can do. Because that somebody is doing well in a particular field doesn't mean you may do well there. You need to find out, do I have the equipment for this field? So these are the ten questions to think. Number one, what hobbies do you have? What hobbies do I have? Sometimes your hobbies, what you love doing, is a clue to a business. It's a clue to a business. It can be singing. It can be a clue. It can be dancing. It can be a clue. It can be that you love braiding hair. There are people who I just love braiding, but they have not learned how to make money from braiding. I just find satisfaction anytime I carry babies. I just, I don't know, it's my hobby. I like carrying babies. I see a mother, I like carrying. It's a clue you are a nanny. So talk about it yesterday. It's a clue. You can start a nanny industry where you are helping take care of your babies. Sometimes it can be, ah, you feel, you feel passionate for children who don't have parents. It's a clue you can start an orphanage. Is Nikki Ademi not doing it and making... I visited Nikki Ademi's orphanage in Lagos, sir. If you enter there, you would pray to be an orphan. I'm not hyped. I'm telling you what they do with children who have no fathers and mother. See the cars, they carry them into school. Their schools are British schools. If you have a problem with your father, you come back home and say, Papa, please, why are you still alive? Can you go to be with the Lord so I can be adopted? You apply for, if you see children, police, somebody saw that problem. How can children... Be without fathers. Can I be their mother? Can I be their mother? Can I be their father? And she started with nothing, just little. And she had healthy values. Before long, government saw this thing and wow, we can come into it. Government said they give you money. Individuals, companies, MTN started sponsoring that orphanage. Because she had passion for children. Some of you just, eh, my hobby is, look deep into that hobby. It can be a clue for a business that can make you a millionaire. God didn't give you so you can just enjoy yourself. God equipped you for others, not for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God equipped you for the benefit of others. Your own benefit comes meeting the needs of others. That's how to, it's a symbiotic relationship. God made life so we can be interdependent on each other, not independent. I can't get what is mine until I've given you what is yours. What are your hobbies? What do you love doing? That's number two. What do you love doing? Number three. When were the last five occasions you had fun? Check those occasions that gives you fun. No time. What are your three biggest talents? 
what have you seen abroad that you wish you had at home? Those kind of questions. Like when I did that and saw that baby salon, I wish we had it in a back lake. And now I'm craving to put up one here. Working hard, working tirelessly, and I've already put it up, so you can't even take the vision from me. That's why I'm communicating it. It's already on ground. Don't even waste your time. I already have it. You see governor coming to... Do you know there are babbing saloons? Governors, they contract... They call the, the guy who is babbing. They call him on phone. Please, can you come and bab my hair in the house? Or in my office? Or in my whatever? The guy finishes babbing. The guy puts 100,000 in his pocket. Him, he knows the governor. He has governor's contact. What is he doing for a living? Babbing head. See as that man diligent. That's the key. Success is not in what you do. Success is in who you are. So, see as that a man diligent. Diligence is a value in business. Diligent in his business. He should, he, the Bible did not specify the kind of business. So, see as that a man diligent in babbing head. He will bab governor's head and not near men. That's a secret. That's a secret. Diligence in business. And there's one guy who has just made a first class who is carrying files from one company to the other. But one guy who is diligently babbing head is talking with the governor. How many of you know Koscharis? Don't have time to talk to you about Koscharis. Koscharis. Hear yeah, Koscharis. He doesn't even know English, sir. Doesn't know how to speak English. I have also been 2010 Excellence in Leadership Conference, Summer Day Miss Church. He was invited to speak on the session of economy, one of the syndicate sessions. My goodness, you won't believe that's the same. He tells you how he started. Somebody who is English, one time he spoke and said, Look, you shouldn't mind my English. I thank God for technology today. You can spell have H A V E as H V. So don't mind me. Let's flow like that. So if you don't like me, don't invite me next time. But you know, his session made the most impact from all other sessions. It's results that cancels insult. And when you have results, men consult you. It's not too much of grammar, papers, credentials. People go for credentials now and they forfeit potentials. Your credentials can't equate to your potentials. People don't know those things. When you have discovered that thing God put inside of you, start using it to benefit your world. Be diligent in it. So what have you seen abroad that you wish you had at home? Whitney, is it um, Disney World said... I see a mountain in Florida. The son told him, mountain in Florida. There are no mountains here. Perhaps he saw Kilimanjaro. I, I wish we have a Kilimanjaro. Perhaps he saw Mount Everest. I, I wish we have a Mount Everest in Florida. And he has built an artificial one. With Disney World saw a world of children that were exploding. A world of children. And he saw how one of the things... Now you have children. Don't take your children to crunches once in a while. You are their enemy. Don't take them to a park. There's one in Enugu, Oakland. I think you told me, sir, that the first thing you did when you came into town was to take your children to an amusement park. At least that's about the only one we have here. And just for climbing inside Janglova and swinging for one or two seconds, he came down, burnt 6,000 naira. And they were happy. They don't care how that is making the money. All they care is other children are doing it. Take us there too. I'm not an adult. I'm also a children. Yes. You, you are with me in the spirit. You have one there, you know. See cartoons now. Disney World sat down and the, he brought himself low to the level of children. He is designing cartoons. I watched some of his cartoon t- clips. My God. I see somebody thinking. For children. And you see children. Sometimes I go to Mrs. Gachi's house. Eh? You see what the children are watching? Some of the languages they use now. Like that one, divine. You just doing something like whoo, poops. Yeah. For you notice, like ouch. Where did they have a cartoon? Put African magic. They will go to their children's parlor. Because anytime I come, find another. Okay, find preaching and put. They don't understand that thing you are doing. Children wears now. Children artisans. Children stuffs. It sells like white fire. Anything you are doing that is meeting the need of children, you are a rich man. Babies. All this nanny stuffs, whatever that has to do with children, commodity, white fire. There's mega money. Someone like me, if I want to go to the market to shop, I won't go with my child. Because you end up spending things, buying things you don't want to buy. 
Daddy, I want that one. What did he see? Eyeglass where they drew Yokozuna this way. And they drew Hokogan this way. I want that eyeglass. To satisfy that guy, you must buy it. And it's not part of your budget. Daddy, I want aeroplane. Daddy, buy me a toy gun. Children wears now. He sells like white. Children's shoes. Do you know parents can choose not to wear good clothes, but for their kids to look good. They feel okay. Are you aware? Parents can go to the market and buy things for and not he feels okay. Do you know my son, my first son, for instance? Hey, when the guy arrives, the kind of thing he would be wearing. It's not what I as in not not coat, suit. Not this one when they wear shoulder part comes like this. And he wears tie, the rope is showing the tie is they were undressed now. That's how my son would be dressed. From four, six, five years. The way I'm looking, that's how he will look. And it's money. I prefer to wear anything. But let my son. Oh, is that pastor's son? Hey, cute boy. Parents now make pride with their children. Can't you see school runs? Those days when in school. Hey, wake up in the morning. Carry your food flags, not lunchbox. Hit the road and go to school. But now... Parents feel impressed carrying their children in their jeep. And they are going to, to show. And the child feels good. He's coming out from a jeep. And have you checked those children who don't have those privileges? They feel incomplete. That's the world we're living in. Everything has changed. Daddy, graduation. Look at schools. Make money more from graduation now. Graduation party. And all parents must come. And... you think can you think that's why this church is building a school because i know anything we're not just going anyway to make the money out of school no we're solving a problem but at the same time money will flow because we know now the thing the thing is in the children's industry can you see something outside bring it okay other questions how could you help someone feel safer and happier how could you help someone feel safer and happier think these questions what could you do to help a parent save a few minutes every day? Pastor talked about it. Parents who are busy with career, bank, law, uh, they are doctors, they are engineers, busy with, can you provide some help for them? Run errands, be a nanny. What could you do to help people save some few minutes every day? What experience would enable people to enjoy their lives more? How could you help families cut down on daily expenses on household commodities, thereby help them save more? Do you know you can even start home management consultancy? That's what he's talking about. You can start a consultancy that helps family even make purchases. You can even help family do purchases. They will pay you, what do you call it, commissions. That is somebody, you just, how much do you spend the month buying your foodstuffs, sir? buying your this and buying, I spent 50000 So do you know you can spend 20000 buying the same thing? Because there are some of these people who know where to buy cheaper. Most parents don't even know. They just spend money. So I can help you save 30. Give me 20. I'm going to buy the same thing for affordable. They will take the cost by. Do you know at the end of the day? Okay, my commission, just 15,000. I'm telling you what people are doing and making money. It seems like you see them every day. It's like they are not doing anything. Where's your shop? The 20th century is not the business that will be done with shops. It's businesses that will be done on phone. Businesses that will be done on Facebook. Businesses that will be done on WhatsApp. Can't you hear of Jumai? How many places do they, do they have shops? It's not just in Lagos. Oh, I don't know if they have another one. Another. But can't you see that they do trading through Jumai? Have you not heard of Jumai? They sell shoes, sell clothes, everything online. So they just send you through your WhatsApp, send you through Facebook. You choose the one you like. And before you notice it, in less than 24 hours or thereabout, and you pay for the services, you pay for that. Look, everything has gone digital now. So you don't even need a shop to... There's somebody I ran into, I met recently, um, some, somebody who sells suit. He was telling me about a dry cleaner in town who just graduated. He has a dry cleaning firm now. What is he doing in that dry cleaning firm? Washing people's clothes, ironing the clothes. Where is he doing it? In his house. Our room apartment. He doesn't need a shop. You have two bedroom apartments. What are you doing with two bedroom apartments? Convert one to washing room. Wash the people's stuff. Dry it. Iron. Just go and learn how to iron the thing. It doesn't take anything. Just learn good ironing. Learn how to wash well. When you iron the people's suit, let those signs not come out. Let people know you are good at it. They will not mind that you have a shop. 
can start from your room. Before you notice it, you have an automotive. You're looking at Arusisi to start the laundry this thing. You don't know how he started. How could you help staff of companies and industries stay balanced in diet? Like me, I need help in that area. If I get somebody now who can manage my diet, I can be the person. I can be so busy that I forget food. And there are many staff of companies like that, so busy they forget food. Can you prepare fruit salads? Little, little teasers. Can you prepare food? fruit salad? There's money in it. Buy this penai. Buy melon. Chop it. Refrigerate it. Put milk and granite inside. Just make it look fine. Seal it well. Some of you are ashamed that that kind of a business. I'm doing it and making money. Hold up quickly. Rule number four. Sorry. Number five. Four. Okay, rule number four. Hire several brains together. Two or more good heads on the team are better than one best brain. Two or more good heads on the team is better than one best brain. So the limitation of one man's ability is the beginning of another man. Another man's ability. So why are people, when you catch an idea, it's some, pe- some people who can help you with ideas to bring that business to pass. Why are brains? Write this quickly. Seven skills you must master in business. Number one, business planning skills. Get that book, The Winning Business. You're going to see an x-ray on business plan I did in that book. Because there are certain businesses you want to fund. What is stopping you is ability to write a business plan, a winning business plan. You have funding agencies or whatever, everywhere. Even individuals who are interested in funding. But you must know how to write a captivating business plan. There are several reasons why you must know how to write a business plan. One of it is so you can save yourself from leaping or save yourself from crashing a business you have not studied first. So business is first studied on paper before it's practiced. So when you put up a business plan, you are able to know the pitfalls in that business. You're able to know what and what you need. You first have that business on paper. The business must first succeed on paper before it succeeds in practical life. As business planning skills, ability to sit down with pen and paper and write out that business. What's the management structure like? What's the leadership? What's the administration? What's the what's the expected startup capital? How much do you need to start up this? What are you spending to buy this? What are you spending to acquire this and all that? How much is your salary if you're going to pay people? All these things must be captured on paper before you venture. So you must master business skills. So any business plan that does not first excel on paper cannot excel in reality. So write your business precisely and clearly. Those are some of the attributes of a good business plan. It must be precise. It must be clear. It must be even brief. So business planning skills also includes the study and learning of the line of business you want to undertake. So use the internet. Be on your phones, your tablets, your computer, and books to study about the particular field of business you want to undertake. This is one way to become a good business person. Number two, business finance. You must understand business finance. Go and learn accounting. One of the things I had to go to learn in ministry when I was starting, I asked questions, please, how do you, I know money comes into church, how do you account? Who is in charge of money in church? How do you open a bank account? How do you present financial reports? How do you do, how do you do budgeting? You just get into a year and start organizing programs. There must be budgets. How do you budget for programs? program planning, project planning, and monitoring, evaluation. I had to go learn those things. I had to buy books. I had to sit down in class. I had to ask questions. I had to observe others who are doing it and successful in it. Business. So you must understand bookkeeping. You are good at selling the product. You are not good at keeping the money. You will soon be out of business. You must understand bookkeeping. You must know how to separate your profit from your capital. You must understand accounting. You must understand financial terminologies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's business finance. No time. Number three, business communication skills. Pastor talked about it yesterday. The ability to speak interpersonal skills. Communication skills. Communication skills. Of the battles you are having in life is not premised on what you don't know. Sometimes premise on not knowing how to communicate you may have a good idea but the problem is how do i say it there's anything you must master master speech 
That's one thing Jesus mastered. You know, Jesus was a very good public speaker, like Solomon. Pastor said Solomon made money from public speaking. Do you know God was a pro- He spoke the word into being. Public speaker. Check the most profitable business today in the world. Speaking business. You're not doing so much of just talking. People are making, you're making money. Go and check. Can't you see that Adenuga is making more money through Glow because it's helping people talk? Talking business. Go and check Larry King, Christian and Paul. Talk, make money. More pair of uh, channels TV and a couple of them. They are making money. Talk. Train your mouth. Any man whose mouth has been trained cannot be poor. If you know how to talk. So, you must build your elevator speech. I call it elevator speech because you don't have the time to say what all you have to say. Elevator speech. Let me give an example. If you are in an elevator with somebody, maybe you met Dangote, you are in a hotel. Okay, let's say you're on board flight to Lagos from Abuja. 40 minutes or 45 minutes. And fortunately, I've entered a plane and I met men I wouldn't have met on a very good day. I would need to fill forms. But you don't fill forms before you enter flight. Because governor is in the plane, you fill form. No, it doesn't work. So you just entered and you met. Governor was sitting close. Your seat is here. I've had it several. The last one I flew, I was sitting here. Governor of Enugu State was sitting behind me. Professor Paul Emeka of Assemblies was sitting here. When you have that kind of opportunity, what do you do with it? That is where your elevator speech comes in. It's called elevator speech because you don't have, they don't have all the time to hear you. Can you say a couple of things in five minutes if you have it all that can make them give you a card and say, please, can we have more time in my office to talk about this? I'm interested in this. Five minutes. You are not just doing introduction. My name is Prince Abba. I hail from our local government. I'm uh, from Upuru, precisely. I schooled in one school around the east called... Um, I graduated with um, I'm also a pastor. I am. Is that what you're going to be saying to them? Dan Gute will come down from that place and tell you, see you anytime destiny brings us together. You will walk away. Can you tell Dan Gute that that man is busy? You think he has that 40 minutes on that plane to waste? In an elevator, two minutes, the thing is going to get to his floor. What will you say? So you need to go and think your speech making ability. Ability to talk people to patronize your business is a is a go and let ability to make an Eskimo buy a bridge hmm? is a skill. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need to learn it. It's called, it's called communication skills. Communication skills. So develop your elevator speech. Develop it. And I said the elevator speech describes few seconds of effective communication with a highly successful investor who has no much time for marathon speech. Straight to the point. Can you hit it? The same thing with interview. for interviews for a job. Sometimes you don't have all the time. I've been on panels where you people for a job. All of them with their first class don't get the job. With their two one don't get it because of this skill they lack. And that was why I took time to deal on that 12 employability skills every graduate must have. Go and pick that tip. You'll learn more on this. Number four. Number four. Business networking. Business networking. You must learn business networking. And that means you must learn how to enter. Who sits in the business? You must know how to... Can I get another mic? You must know how to meet him and network with him. Number two, you must know how to form gangs. People of like minds in that same business. So there's power in networking. If you must become a successful entrepreneur, you must know how to connect with the right people. So that's a skill you must learn. Number five, business execution skills. Mm -hmm. That means you must know how to execute your ideas. And that means moving the idea from paper into reality. You must know how to develop a practical prototype of your business idea. So that means it's time to start. That's business execution skills. Don't just think it all day long. You need to learn how to start it. The problem with us around this part of the world is that we know how to talk it. We don't know how to do it. 
Start it. Start. And the best way to start is to start. If you're waiting for a particular formula before you start, you keep waiting. He that observes the wind will not sow. The, the only formula to start that business is to start it. Start it. If it is to fix nails, eh? Go and put your chair in front of your hostel. Sit down there. I fix nails. Be the sign. Is we you want to fix? Start talking to your classmates. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Start talking to your classmates. I fix weave on. If you see the weave on, I fix. You won't go to. So start advertising it. Start. Big dreams, big visions are not achieved in a day. Big visions and big goals are achieved daily, daily, daily. So you're waiting until you get all the things. You won't start. Start from somewhere. If it's one you have, put that one to use. You have to. Put it to use. As you put it, that's the law of multiplication. It starts with sowing. When you sow that seed, it multiplies. If that seed remains in your hand, it dies. It abides alone. Until the seed falls down to the ground and dies, it abides alone. So sow it. Start. So it's time to start a shop. It's time to have a business name. Go and register a business name. That's one way to start. You've built... You want to start a business, you need to have a name for that business. If it needs registration, go and register it. That's how we know you are serious. Register the name. Build the customer experience. Map it out from... And there's no time, no time. Number six, over the last, selling skills. No product can sell itself. You must sell them. So you must compel the customers to buy. Except you sell, you cannot make money. Selling skills. Go and read books on sales techniques. There are some written by... What is this, my friend? Brain Tracy. The power of sales. All of those books. Read on how to sell, how to sell, how to sell. Marketing, how to market the goods. So engage with your customers face to face. I pity people who are opening shop and sitting down there waiting for customers. This day business is not the day you meet, wait for customers. You go for them. Banks do it. You think they sit down there and they wait. The guys who are sitting on the counter giving you money are not the real bankers. The real bankers are the ones who are always on the street. They are driving from this campus to that other school you see them going to this looking for customers for the company so you must know how to sell your product don't just sit down if there's any department you must have in your in your business that is most crucial most central to the success of that business is the marketing department don't play with it sales department because the essence of business is to sell if you can't sell the goods you are not doing business don't tell me you have a shop somewhere you can't sell the goods. Send, even in church, we do it. So winning. That's the marketing arm of the church. MVP department. Marketing arm of the church. And that's why I focus energy there. Because church will grow on the basis of how much we are winning souls. It's marketing. We don't just sit down here and wait for members to come. No, you have to go and teach them. Most people don't know what you have to offer until you get them in. It's the same thing in church. Selling skills. So engage the customer face to face. Follow your customers up and give them important feedbacks. And when you sell, practice servant salesmanship. When you sell, practice servant salesmanship. Serve, serve, serve. Don't lie to your customers. Don't tell them. Don't hype them. You're selling a cream that can remove pimples. Don't tell them this thing can remove pimples and also remove your skin color. If you're not careful, guy, don't hype. Don't exaggerate. Selling toothpaste. Don't tell them this thing would make your teeth white. It will also make your tongue. This your tongue will stop being red. It can be white too. Don't lie. Be truthful. So you cannot fool your customers twice. When they buy something from you and discover you lied to them, you can't fool them the second time. They won't come back. Customers are smarter than even their sellers than the sellers. You can't fool them twice. So sell for benefits. Sell for the benefit of the customer. Sell benefits. Don't sell futures. Finally, number seven, go and learn people and leadership skills. People and leadership skills. Now, the people you have on your business team will either make or mar your business. Treat your leaders like the best. They are your first customers. Because they are the first people who patronize the business. They are the ones who will talk the business. They're the ones who will make the business appealing to others. Treat them like kings. When I go to a company and customers or the people selling for the CEO are not acting right, I know there's something wrong with the guy there. He has not learned how to treat his employees. Hire good people. People as good as you are. So we're recruiting. Recruit people. Now this is how to recruit. Recruit people with their hearts first before a hand. Heart talks about attitude. Hand talks about skills. 
If you get a man who has skills without attitude, he will kill you. Get a man with attitude who has a heart for that business. He may not know how to go about it. You can train skills. Attitude is one of the things that is hardest to train. You can train skills easier than attitude. So look for good people. Good people. People who are loyal. Who can be trustworthy. People who can die for that business. People who are faithful. Don't get one rebellious guy in your team and say the guy is an expert. He will kill you. Go for people who have a heart. That's what I just said. For the business. Go for people who have a heart before a head. Hmm? Hire people with good, with records on job performance. So your staff are your first customers. Treat them well. Don't pay bananas. Reward extra efforts. Pick those ones who are doing well amongst your team. Reward them. Even the customers that patronized you more for the year deserves a reward. So keep records. The one who patronized you best for the year, call him, send him something. We check our record and you are our most, you are the best. Organize customers. Uh, you know, in companies they do, is it employee, end of the year, staff, whatever. You can do end of the year, customer, whatever. And send text messages to all your customers. Let them come. Do a banquet for them. And pick out those ones who patronize you more. Appreciate them. It will encourage them to buy more from you and also encourage them to network more people to you. If you serve one customer right, you are only building a potential in that customer to get you 10 more. I think we'll stop here. We'll stop here. God bless you. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31-555-747. Princeton Hills Ministries. Raising global leaders.